In this tutorial, I'll go over accepting data uh, from the text field. So what we're going to do is use this ID here, input, in order to reference this input text field and accept that data. Um, we've gone over already how we can trigger a function from our HTML by using the input type of button and then the on click right here. The on click is an HTML attribute and it just defines what's going to occur after we press the button and we click it with our, um, with our mouse button. Uh, by the way, that would also work on, on, on a touch device. So on click is recognized in that sense. So if you were to have that on a uh, iPad and you were to touch the button, then it would still work to trigger this. Now this is the, uh, the game function. And so if I go to our JavaScript, then there is a game function that will be triggered. So the way that this works in memory is that the JavaScript will load the functions in memory, then it will, then it will load the statements. Um, and so we have variable user number, variable uh, computer number. The user number is what's going to be um, holding. That'll be the variable that will accept the user input. And we'll establish that in just a minute. Now, this is going to be a number guessing game. So we're going to have the, the users guess what the computer has chosen. So in this case, um, I've just went ahead and hard coded the number as number nine. Now, uh, typically you wouldn't want to do this. The next step after this would be able to have a random number. But for right now, it'll just be a bit easier to have this as our first step. So line one establishes the variable that we'll use to accept user. Uh, line two establishes the variable that we now have the computer number. So in this function now, this is the function that will be called every single time that we press the button. We will execute the game and do a recheck. So in order to um, accept data from the user, we'll want to reference the document object model. So I'm going to reference document. And there's this, L, there's this method called get element by ID. And so it establishes that we, you know, if, if you think through what that's called, it makes sense. You're going to get the element by its ID. We're going to refer to this ID right here. It's going to be um, ID of input. So we're going to get that input uh, element. So let's go do that. Get element by ID. And let's see here. Dot get element by ID. Okay. I just want to make sure that it was um, working correctly with the IntelliSense. Okay, so now it will get that value and I'll go ahead and put the ID in here. So whatever ID you have here, um, I think I have two right now, button or input. So it should recognize that with our IntelliSense. And so we have input or output and it's not showing me button at this time. Maybe that's not an ID. That might just be, no, that's just the type. So I was a little bit incorrect on that. Okay. So it is working to, to recognize what IDs already have on the page. So if you had like, like five IDs, then, would, then in uh, Visual Studio, Dreamweaver, any of these uh, programs, uh, usually it's going to default and show you those, those that are available. So I'm going to choose input. And what I'm going to do is just do an alert and I'll just do this all in the same line alert. Okay. Now we won't actually see our number. I don't believe here. We're just going to see the value of that. So let me go ahead and type in the number seven and I hit submit. So it comes on up and it tells me that it's an object, an HTML input element. Well, that actually makes sense. There's not an error here. That's actually behaving correctly. So it is retrieving an object and it's retrieving the input element. Okay. Cause that's what I'm telling it to do. Get the element by IDs precisely doing that. However, normally you're going to want the value of that input element. You don't just want, you know, to get the element itself. So that's going to be a property called value. Now, if you do an alert on this document, get element by ID and the value of that element, we should get the number that the user typed in. So a slightly easier way to do this will be to now load that data into our variable. So I say username, username, actually, let me call it user number, pardon me, user number, which is a variable I established on line one. Now that user number will equal the value that the person typed in. And let's do an alert on that. And a 
alert on user number. All right, we'll execute that and make sure that is indeed working. All right, so I'll type in, let me do a refresh here. Okay, I'll type in the number nine. So it should return nine. Oh, I'm getting an undefined. So let me check on my error here. Uh, that's because I don't have the right variable name, which you may have already seen. Got to refresh that. And let's try it again. Okay, so now I am getting nine as the result. Just to make sure this is all working, I can double check it. Type one, hit submit, and it turns the number one. Okay, so again, just getting that element by ID, loading that in here. Now we can process that. We can use what the user has typed in. It was very powerful. We've really ramped it up a notch just in the last tutorial or, or, or two. Much more powerful applications.